a very special person. We hear a lecture about the cradle-to-cradle -cradle economy. Please, Michael, come on stage and share your wisdom. So, good morning. Uh, first of all, thanks for this nice introduction, Jan, and thanks for setting this up, because it always needs individuals who do things. Otherwise, there are a lot of people who just talk, but to organize such an event is a lot of work, and thanks for that. So I'm not that smart. Look, you can see, I even don't get my hair cut in time. I, I, I'm biting fingernails. I never take any cold showers. I don't do any sports. Uh, <laughs> So I'm not that smart, I'm just, just a scientist. And, and I even disagree a little bit with your theme of the conference. I understand what you do by highlighting green, but this is no longer about green. Because when you call it green, you put it in a little niche. Yeah? When you talk about green architecture, green economy, look, there is either good or bad. Yeah? If you make buildings, where indoor air quality is eight times worse than outside urban air. This is just a bad quality. So let's talk about holistic quality and take the eco for economy. Because if you put it in green, you make a tiny little ghetto. Yeah? And that doesn't help. Yeah. If a product makes cancer, a children's toy from Mattel contains 600 dangerous chemicals. This is just a bad product. So let's talk about quality, not about, uh, uh, yeah, let's, maybe you can talk about beauty as well. But uh, the interesting thing, for example, if you take this little sheet, there is no green on the market for printing, which is green. Yeah? All the green printing inks are always toxic. So that's really amazing. We always, when we use a green, we always need to combine a yellow and a blue to make a green out of it. Yeah. So that's why it is, it's about innovation. We now can use 30 years of blaming and shaming for making far better products. And definitely, it's now becoming mainstream. What we talk cradle to cradle, everybody now does it. This is a little critical because when you don't know really what it is, you basically define things as cradle to cradle when they are not cradle to cradle. Yeah? And sometimes it's more noodle to noodle or noodle to noodle. Yeah? <laughs> and that's just what it is. But, but Belgium put a lot of money in the last presidency in it. And it's about individuals. Yeah? It's, it is Jorke Schaufliche and the others one who basically initiated cradle to cradle Europe activities. There's more than 100 million euros of research money in it now. So just whenever you need to do a project, apply for the money. And even if it's not perfect, do it, because if we wait till it's perfect, it will take too long. Traditionally, we take things, we make things, we put them into landfills, and we think it's environmental protection when we destroy less. You, know, you can see in a hotel, please reduce your water consumption, protect the environment. Please reduce your waste, protect the environment. Please reduce your detergent consumption, protect the environment. But that's a very strange perception of protection that would be the same as say, please protect your child when you beat your child only five times instead of ten times. Yeah. You don't protect, you only destroy a little less. Yeah. And that's no protection. Yeah. In that logic, by the way, you can do something. And Jan, I'm really sorry for you because you're a bad person when it comes to environmental protection. The European Union is doing light bulbs banning. Yeah. They, we are importing uh, palm oil. Uh, we are burning corn and uh, making biogas. Uh, we could do far more if we would make legislation that everybody has to wear a tie. Yeah? So women are the real problem, and you are the problem. Because if you get to wear a tie, you get a little strangled. Yeah? You, then you can reduce the room temperature for 2 degrees Celsius, yeah? <laughs> which saves at least six times more energy than all the light bulbs of Europe set changing in that. Yeah? In, but to, to be honest, in summer it means that you have to wear a skirt as well, yeah? because then it's the opposite. Yeah? Uh, for climatization. We have been growing up with all these environmental disasters, and that's why we feel uh, guilty for being on this planet. How could you study physics after Chernobyl? Yeah. What, how can you become an engineer after what's happening in Japan now? Yeah. How can you anyhow become a chemist after Bhopal? Yeah. And the ones who studied science did it with a bad consciousness. That, that's why they try to reduce, to avoid, to minimize. All this footprint calculation says it's better we are not here. Yeah. Berlin signed a declaration to be carbon neutral in 2050. 
you can only be carbon neutral when you don't exist. It's the only way. Yeah. We talk about zero emission. You can only have zero emission when you don't exist. It's the only way. Yeah. So this is why we, we did 30 years of guilt management, blaming and shaming. And now out of this, we generated now so much expertise that we can do the whole thing completely differently. That's why we can reinvent stuff. This is how our planet looks like. How can you study chemistry when 12 million tons of plastic go into the oceans every year? There are more whales, more turtles, more seals being killed by plastic than by anything else. A baby takes about 7,500 diapers in the United States. Yeah. Uh, this is 20% of Berlin's municipal waste stream, for example, when you take out this stuff. Yeah. So this is just a mountain of one year, and this is just not designed for humans. It's a waste problem. And because we are getting older, the diapers get bigger. Yeah. So there is some potential in it. Yeah. <laughs> so this is Copenhagen, yeah, to be carbon neutral in 2025 even. Yeah. You can be only carbon neutral when you're not existing. It's the only way. Yeah. That's why we look, cradle to crave, we are 100% pig, 90% pig. And every eco-label which you do on your product tells your customer, please don't buy my product. Yeah? Because if you don't buy it, it's even better. Yeah? So <laughs> should you, you better don't buy it. Please don't buy my product. Yeah? Everybody who says about, we want to be zero emission, you can be only zero emission when you don't exist. I want to honor one person here in this room, Franz Alt, specifically. He was the first one who talked about topsoil. Yeah. The very first one, Franz Alt, yeah, he's my real hero yeah, on that. Because look, when you grow one hectare of corn to make biogas, you lose between 11 and 30,000 tons of tops, uh, 30 tons of topsoil. So between 11 and 30 tons of topsoil per hectare by growing corn yeah, to make biogas. How <laughs> sick. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Franz Alt was pointing out that we lose up to about 5,000 times more topsoil than we make, yeah, about 25 years ago. Yeah. So what is it? People talk about carbon trading, but, car but the soil is not included in carbon trading. Two-thirds of all the carbon is in topsoil, not in oil, not in coal, yeah, <laughs> but in topsoil. And it's not included in our thinking. We, we are buying 3 million tons of palm oil in, from Indonesia every year. One hectare of rainforest has 7,000 tons of carbon in it. One hectare of palm oil, of palm oil plantation, has 60 tons of carbon in it. Yeah. This is what I call ecologism. We are subsidizing people who burn wood chips as renewable energy. <laughs> We are losing the whole particle board industry right now because of that. Because when you subsidize the burning of wood, yeah, you lose all the wood furniture, particle board, paper industry, because it's so much more lucrative to burn wood than to do something with it first. Yeah. So instead of making first building materials, furniture, particle boards, uh, paper, and then to burn it, yeah, <laughs> we, we burn it. <laughs> and we think it's for the good for the environment. Yeah. This is what I call ecologism. Yeah, it's like socialism was never social. Yeah. We now face a period of ecologism, which it, it pretends to do something, but it's just pretending to do so. It keeps us busy. We were so successful with Cradle to Cradle in the United States because of George Bush, because George Bush clearly said, I'm not very smart and I don't do anything. Yeah. So <laughs> I was in Sydney, for example, in November 2007, and there was George Bush, and he said, I'm so glad to be in Austria. <laughs> Austria. Yeah. 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 Because, it, because it was Australia, but after seven years in power, he didn't know the difference between Austria and Australia. And then he was opening a conference you know, He, he, and he was opening the OPEC conference because it was the, so it's Vienna, OPEC, but it was the Asian Pacific conference, APEC. Yeah. When this is your president, you know you have some potential as well. Yeah. And, <laughs> and then you don't wait for the government anymore. Yeah. Whereas in Europe, we keep people busy, yeah, do endless activities. We are uh, re, 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 taking out asbestos from brake pads, for example, Volkswagen, yeah, Ford. But nobody asked what is instead. Instead, it's antimony, which is much stronger carcinogen. Yeah but it's free of asbestos. It's like, Jan, I like invite you for dinner and said, oh, it's free of chicken. That doesn't help you anything. Yeah? So that's why companies like Toyota, our goal is zero emissions. And you show a little baby and said, the aim is zero emissions. Look, even if you would shoot yourself right now, you could not achieve it. You would still have emissions. So it doesn't help. It's an aim which you cannot achieve because you're existing already. Yeah? And by the way, <laughs> this tree doesn't have zero emissions. The tree makes oxygen. Yeah? Not zero emission. This tree is not carbon neutral. This tree is carbon positive. Yeah. 
No passive houses. Yeah? No, this tree makes oxygen, cleans the air. It's a habitat for 200 other species minimum. So why can't we have a beneficial footprint? We always take the northern approach. Yeah? Yeah? When, when you walk in Sweden, your footprint is a disaster. That's why try, people try to minimize their footprint. You can do something maybe when you make a legislation that you need to wear high heels. Yeah? You can make, you minimize your footprint. But does it help? So the, the question is, when you're in Italy, your footprint means the water can stay in the meadow much better. So why don't we have a big footprint but make it a wetland? We don't need to apologize for being on this planet. 